got nothing to hit but the heights. You'll be great, you'll be swell, just you wait, I can tell. That lucky star we talk about is too. Honey, everything's coming up roses for me and for you. <laughs> today to celebrate the life of this remarkable woman, my mother, Lita Powell Drake. My name is Aaron Drake, and over the next 90 minutes, I'd like to take you down memory lane and give you an opportunity to learn more about Lita's life as we try to retell it about the impact that she had on the lives of so many people here in Nebraska. And I know not everyone could be here today given the coronavirus situation, the distance it might take to get here, the Husker football game, and just the, 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 the life that, that uh, everyday demands of our life. So I wanna take a special opportunity to thank KLKN for providing a live stream of this event so people can watch at the comfort of their homes. And of course, a big thank you to the Community Playhouse for providing a venue so all the people here today could help celebrate the life of Lita of Lincoln. My mother liked to plan everything, including writing her own obituary well in advance. Um, in it, she had wrote that her final performance would be held at the Lincoln Community Playhouse in absentia on a date that she just left blank. I pre-read this a bit a few months ago and I talked to her about it and she really couldn't recall. Her memory was really beginning to fade as was her health. So although I, she understood what I was saying, she really didn't know what it meant. Um, I wanted to think that maybe this is what she would have wanted. So mother, this is for you. Lita's life was always an adventure, uh, but it wasn't an adventure just for her. She was very inclusive. She wanted to make sure that anybody and everybody could join her when she was experiencing these things. When I was a young boy, I remember riding this elephant with her from um, when the Barnum Bailey Circus was in town and they were taking the, uh, the animals from the train tracks by UNL to Persian Auditorium. She took me along as she did on everything else. She wanted to make sure that I was experiencing the same thing that she was, despite the fact that she had to raise me as a single parent in a time before there were daycares, all while trying to carry on a, a full career at the same time. She had to get up at 4.30 every morning to get to the TV station to start hosting the morning show. In that environment, she felt her role was to, again, be inclusive, to invite the people of Nebraska to come and show how special they were. From Hebron to Hastings, from North Platte to Nebraska City, from Grand Island and Goner, everybody would come in, whether it be the Swing Choir, the Barbershop Quartet, or the Humane Society. In the afternoons, Lita would include the children of Nebraska to come and celebrate their birthdays on Cartoon Corral. She was Calamity Kate, the West's only lady sheriff, and she would ask everybody what they wanted to be when they grew up, all while eating a hamburger, drinking a bottle of Coke, and watching some cartoons. Lita was instrumental in developing the city, Star City Parade. Here she included all the small towns from Lincoln, or from around the state, to come to Lincoln and participate in that parade. There were marching bands, there were floats, there were clowns driving cars, and even proud veterans would come. When she traveled, she always made sure that she traveled with someone, 
whether it be family or friends or people from the television station or whomever. She wanted to make sure they experienced the world as she saw it. She traveled to China, Australia, Canada, Europe, Israel, Africa, among many, many other countries. In sports and competition, she recruited everyone that she could, whether it be bowling or racquetball, the Cornhusker State Games, horseshoes. She had flying races with friends, and they would fly across the country whenever they could, and they even won, even won awards. Again, it was always with friends. Through Ollie, she developed numerous classes for amateurs and people who love the theater, for seniors to come together and learn about the theater, learn about different classes uh, throughout their whole life and really be a lifelong education, which is truly the, what Ollie is all about. She also had developed a lot of uh, classes for young children to learn theater for the very first time. Make no mistake, Lita was always about the adventure, and she was determined, determined to make sure that anybody and everybody whom she could find would come along, and anyone within singing distance, if you know Lita. Let's talk about her childhood. Lita grew up in Minnesota, the fourth of five children. There was Jim, Jeanette, Thomas, Lita, and Jack. Her mother, Nellie, a former Miss Oklahoma turned school teacher. Her father, a diamond miner who found the world's largest diamond, which is called the Cullinan Diamond, which is now part of the Crown Jewels at the Tower of London. She attended the University of Minnesota in Duluth and earned her bachelor's in theater. She followed her favorite professor, Dr. Morgan, from Minnesota down to Nebraska, where he was heading up the UNL Department of Theater. There she earned uh, her master's degree in speech communications. She won the Best Actor Award uh, five times, and they renamed it the Lita Powell Drake Award. With locks of, of strawberry hair, a willingness to make a bold fashion statement, a svelte figure and a knowledge of stage presence, she quickly earned many modeling jobs. When they found out that she could speak, they actually moved her into TV commercials. Um, she started working at KLN TV as the front receptionist, answering the phones when people would call in. And on the side, they would uh, have her do commercials live uh, when they needed someone. It was at this time that Lita got her big break. The host of the morning show and cartoon corral, Wayne West, suddenly fell ill and they needed someone to fill in, mind you, only temporarily. Lita was called up from the minors. The weeks turned into months and eventually Wayne succumbed to his illness. She continued to host the show for a few years, earning $10 per show. Eventually, she put her foot down and said, no more, unless you give me a full salary, unless you give me the title of host, I'm quitting. The men in the boardroom relented, and Lita never looked back. Here's some shows, pictures from that. As a mother, she enrolled me in swimming lessons since we lived at Capitol Beach. She encouraged me to join the swim team and begin competing, probably due to her voracious appetite for competition. She also had me doing live TV commercials as a young boy, eating hot dogs and Aunt Betty bread. Coming in after swim practice, I would have wet hair on all the commercials. I grew up and went to Lincoln High, and eventually I went and swam for the University of Nebraska. Lita's life was glamorous at times. She got to meet lots of celebrities interview lots of uh, presidents and people around the country. And then, of course, there were the not so glamorous moments that occurred. This was an interesting story where they were doing some, uh, an ad for waterproof clothing, and they were supposed to trickle some water above her down onto some clothes to see how it didn't get wet. And she was not very fond of this photo, but I always thought it was great. Well. 
1991, Lita's family grew. I married Cindy. Um, I don't know if we can have the house lights come down. I'd like to introduce my family if they're here. So my wife, Cindy, right here. My daughter, uh, Danielle. And Sierra, who will be coming out. Oh, there, there she is right now. Hi. <laughs> Lita loved to get both of these girls enrolled in every activity, every sport that she had been involved in, just the same way as she had done years before. And of course, Lita also introduced them to the theater. Lita would be a, an outstanding role model for both of these girls, but not only for them, but for all women. To understand that through dedication, hard work, you could achieve anything that you wanted as long as you set your mind to it. Men did not have the corner of the market on all the good jobs, as women have just as much right to pursue their own goals and achieve greatness on their own terms. Now I want to pass the microphone off to one of Lita's prodigies, my daughter and Lita's granddaughter, Sierra Drake. All right, I'm Sierra Drake. It's nice to have you all here this afternoon. Um, I wrote this little something something for you all, so I'll get started. Okay. How old do you think you'll live to be? The trouble in answering that question is there is simply no way to know. The better question is, what will you think of your life when that time comes? Will you look back at all the things you've accomplished through the years and feel fulfilled? Maybe you won't see all the wonders of the world, but did you catch a glimpse or two of something spectacular? More importantly, will you feel the relationships with the ones you love were nurtured? I've heard the saying that you actually die twice. Once when your heart stops beating and the body you walk to this earth in fades to dust. The second, when someone says your name for the very last time. Lita had joked about thinking she would live forever. Well, good news if this saying is true, she just might. I share with you all our sadness in having to say goodbye to one of the most incredible human beings Lita Powell Drake. I knew her as GM, as she always thought she was too young to be called grandmother. And on top of it, she liked that GM also stood for general manager. <laughs> I read through what many of you have shared on her Facebook wall, your fond memories each of you had with her. And the tears paused to let a smile break through, to see the impact she had on the lives of so many just through being herself. She motivated people to join in on the fun, to be active in your community despite growing older, to not be afraid to, to show your true self and to be boldly proud of that. She had the same impact on me growing up. She was the reason I became involved with the theater, which are some of my fondest memories during my time in Nebraska. I was in 12 or so productions during a five-year period, at both here at the Lincoln Community Playhouse and the Haymarket Theater. My first onstage performance was Godspell Jr. at the age of seven. I remember GM helping me go over and memorize my lines, encouraging me to experiment with different delivery methods and to overcome my shyness. There's a part in Godspell when the ensemble must part to join either the sheep or the goats, and we, the cast, were instructed to somewhat randomly pick a side and then crawl over on our hands and knees. Well, as you can imagine, that was just too boring for Lita's satisfaction. So instead, we came up with a plan for me to be the last one in the middle, look back and forth at both sides debating, and then stick my tongue out at the opposing side before strutting over to the other. Everyone got a good kick out of that. She saw an opportunity for comedy and to put her own unique twist on something and she never failed to seize it. Through acting, I learned to love getting on stage, to sing and dance my heart out. After all, my parents can attest I was doing it at home all the time, free of charge, and usually for an unsuspecting audience. And I began to understand, there is no better feeling than when you know you deeply connected with your audience, 
and can make them feel as though it wasn't a show and that the feelings they felt were real. And I have her to thank for allowing me to discover that special piece of what acting can hold. It was that same feeling that drew Lita to the theater. She was always connecting with people around her, on and off the stage, uninhibited among strangers, inclusive and encouraging, entertaining, exciting, and hilarious. She stole the hearts of the people of Nebraska through her dedication to community service, theater, television and broadcasting, and the most memorable and wide-reaching, I think of all, Cartoon Corral. You all met and came to know and love her bright and bold personality through a variety of ways. You took home bowling trophies together. You sang and danced on this very stage with her. You worked tireless hours with her at the Salvation Army and at the university for a greater cause. But I'd like to share with you the lens through which I saw her. The relationship between a grandparent and grandchild is a special one. It's the bridge that allows two very distant and different generations to learn to become closer to one another. The relationship between GM and I was not unique in the ways you might expect between someone who grew up surrounded by technology and one who was learning to incorporate it after many years without it. I had to take many patient, deep breaths when explaining to her how she must read or delete emails before over 800 pile up in her inbox. It was an endless struggle. <laughs> and she practiced her patience with me when trying to understand why I took so long to get ready in the morning before leaving the house. This is not a fashion show, Sierra, it's the grocery store. I couldn't count how many times I heard her say that. But our relationship was unique in the truly once-in-a-lifetime adventures we sought out. Together, we traversed the Grand Canyon, went whitewater rafting down the rapids of the Colorado River, both thinking in the moment that might be how we died. We learned how to tie square knots and ride and lasso a horse, though I think she had a leg up on me in the Wild West department, given her experience in calf scrambling. A worthwhile read in her book, if you don't yet know the story. She taught me how to do a three-step approach in bowling, how to pump gas at the age of probably six or seven, and how to throw a proper horseshoe. Every day together turned into something unexpected, and I deeply cherish these experiences we shared together and how many new skills she taught me. But it's less so about the skill itself. It's the value in loving to learn something new. Rather than relying on someone else, she proved she could do it on her own. And if not, she'd learn how. Independence and self-sustainability. A desire to learn, to read, to not be afraid to ask questions to explore whatever incites your curiosity. These are the things I carry with me because of her. The truth is, the last few months of her life after being diagnosed with cancer were a very difficult time for her. She was deeply afraid. Afraid of leaving behind all the people she loved and all the things she loved to do. Even after 83 years filled with excitement and adventure, she knew she never wanted to be done. While our hearts feel heavy, knowing she is no longer with us, I ask myself, is she really gone? She did what the most memorable people throughout history have done. She broke barriers, particularly for women, said to hell with the status quo, and made an indelible impression on all of those whose path she crossed. She will live on in the ways she inspired you and me. To accept hard work as the precursor to success. To not set limits on what you think you are capable of. To sing and dance like no one is watching, and even better when they are. If all the world's a stage, Lita was known to steal the spotlight. But more importantly, she inspires us to find our own way into the spotlight. To allow ourselves to shine the way she did is how her light will continue to burn for generations to come. Thank you.
Good times and bum times, I've seen them all, and my dear, I'm still here. Plush velvet sometimes, sometimes just pretzels and beer, but I'm here. I've stuffed the dailies in my shoes, strummed ukuleles, sung the blues, seen all my dreams disappear, but I'm here. I've slept in shanties, guest of the WPA, but I'm here. Danced in my scanties, three bucks a night was the pay, but I'm here. I've stood on bread lines with the best, watched while the headlines did the rest. In the depression, was I depressed nowhere near? I met a big financier, so I'm here. Black sable one day, next day it goes into hawk. But I'm here. Top billing Monday, Tuesday you're touring in stock. But I'm here. First you're another slow eyed vamp. Then someone's mother, then your camp. Then you career from career to career. I'm almost through my memoirs, and I'm here. I've gotten through. Hey, lady, aren't you? Who, who's this? Wow, what a look you were. Or better yet, sorry I thought you were. Who's it? Whatever happened to her? Good times and bum times, I've seen them all, and my dear, I'm still here. Plush velvet sometimes, sometimes just pretzels and beer, but I'm here. I've run the gamut, A to Z, three cheers and damn it, say la vie. I got through all of last year, and we're here. Lord knows at least we were there, and she's here. Look who's here, she's still here. We've been friends, good friends, for 60 years. Uh, she was a performer, as you know, an actor, a vibrant, extremely intelligent woman. Uh, I like to say every TV station, every Broadway theater, every home, every office needs Alita Powell Drake. That's the kind of person she was. Uh, she did, I remember vividly, especially, two of her performances at University Theater that I'll never forget. I just want to mention why she was so good. I saw Jessica Tandy in New York do Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Jessica Tandy, a much honored actress, a wonderful, brilliant actress. Lita played that part on the university stage, but she brought something to that part of Martha that Jessica Tandy could never do. As you know, Martha was selfish, she was vindictive, she was angry, she 
was not satisfied with her husband, with her life, nothing. Lita brought all those qualities. Tandy brought all those qualities. But there was one quality, as I said, that Tandy couldn't bring. And that was Martha, as Lita played it, and of course she had to have makeup and gray hair, et cetera. But Martha was a beautiful woman, giving up that beauty and angry about that too. And it added a poignancy. Jessica Tandy simply wasn't, and she's wonderful, but she was not a beautiful physically woman. I think this is the reason Elizabeth Taylor got the part in the film. It adds so much. And believe me, uh, Lita left nothing unturned. She always did her homework. Now the other part, <clears throat> It's just the opposite of Martha. It's Blanche Dubois from Streetcar Named Desire. This beautiful Southern belle, frantic all the time, losing her beauty, unhappy with her life, quiet. Lita brought both of those parts home, right smack in the heart for every audience that was there. To see her, uh, I always uh, get ahead of where I am. <clears throat> I think people in theater, TV, performing arts, we always like to define, or we wonder, what is star quality? How do you define star quality? Well, you may all have your own opinion. It's certainly as good as mine. But who is it? What is it? Who has it? In my view, star quality are simply women, men, who show up on the screen or walk across a stage and audiences are interested. They follow that person. It's hard to define. Uh, Lita had it without even trying. <clears throat> Those people simply interest audiences, and they build those wonderful fan bases. She was a formidable actress on the stage, and she was a very compelling personality on television. <coughs> Excuse me. One of her strongest attributes, in my opinion, was curiosity. Lita had to know everything about everything. Well, how do you pronounce that? Well, where did that come from? Well, what's the history behind that? She was always looking for the why of it, the history, as I mentioned, and especially, hmm, I'd like to do that. How do I do that? Whether it becomes a pilot in a plane or playing Queen Elizabeth, she wanted to know. And I hope that you'll realize she was a diligent, dependable, very hard working person. She got up before 4 a.m. to do those morning shows at Channel 10. She <clears throat> learned how to interview myriads of people on that show and became quite famous, as you know, with interviews of Hollywood stars that were broadcast on Channel 10 and 11. Lita produced the show. She lined up all the talent. She did the interviews. She had an indefatigable energy. In fact, that energy, in, to me, it was the hallmark of her life. She always had it. Um, she really affected positively hundreds and hundreds of kids when she did Cartoon Corral. And she invented Calamity Kate, and she was wonderful in that. And those kids trooped through the, through the studios 
They never forgot it. In fact, as recently as this past summer, I spent a lot of time with Lita, different places. 50 and 60 year old people invariably would come up and say, oh, oh, Lita Powell, great. I had my sixth birthday on your show. And Lita, <laughs> she always appreciated that. Uh, and the thing about it that people must appreciate, I'm sure they do, I'm sure those mothers and fathers do. She was so sensitive to the needs of those kids, to the feelings of those little kids. She was instinctive about bringing out the best comments from the kids, the best demeanor from those little kids. And she designed programs that were very careful, uh, careful attention paid to the language used, the moral content presented, educational values. Lita adhered to the highest standards for decades in everything she did. But I like to always think that people like that have an integrity that especially endears them to others because we trust people like that. <clears throat> she was a true professional and she learned her craft so well that no matter what went wrong, and believe me, backstage, on stage, TV, things go wrong. And I always admired how she could dream up enough dialogue to carry the place along until so-and-so remembered the lines, but that's how she was. And this, she could look into a television camera and talk to you and persuade you to her whatever, a, an idea, a product she was selling. She's a master seller. And she always gave a sense of honesty, believability, whether it was selling or whether it was performing. Then she came to public broadcasting where I live. That's how I got to know her. We started uh, Nebraska Public Broadcasting in the basement of the Temple Building while she was upstairs. This was in 1960. We started down there in 1954, but we were all brand new, and we all just kind of grew up together. When she came over to us, I'm sure you're all familiar with the fact that we have to raise money from the public to keep going, and we have certain shows that we call pledge shows, and we ask you to please call so-and-so and have your credit card ready and, and help us stay on the air. She's the best person I've ever seen do that. And this is the reason why. It was that work ethic. Lita watched every single pledge show all the way through. Nobody else did, she did. And when she went before the camera, she knew every detail. And with that rapid fire delivery, and that wonderful memory she had, she just drove it home. We had her for 12 years there, and she raised thousands and thousands of dollars in behalf of Nebraska Public Broadcasting. She was inducted into the Nebraska Broadcasters Hall of Fame in 2010. And this past August the 14th, I was lucky to be with the family at the uh, 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 I always forget oh, the arena, the uh, the arena, the Pinnacle Bank Arena, for the graduation of the kids graduating from the University of Nebraska, August 14th, where this is truly a high honor. Ronnie Green, the Chancellor the University of Nebraska conferred upon her an honorary doctor of humane letters. I'm thinking of uh, John Neihart, our poet laureate, 
The university did that for him. Uh, they did it for uh, Mari Sandoz, a great Nebraska writer, and they did it for Lita Powell Drake. About twice a month, for the last few years, Lita and I would meet at the Imperial Palace. We loved, they have a delicious Korean soup called Jambon, and we used to meet there and talk and criticize and talk about plays, etc. Well, that honorary doctorate was an honor, of course, that pleased her enormously. She lived exactly a month and a day after receiving that doctorate. But I remember right before that ceremony, she, just, she was getting weak, of course. She had leukemia. And she just said, I just, I just hope I can, by myself, just walk over there to get that award. Well, I can tell you, maybe some of you were, were there, I hope so. But when that spotlight came on and Ronnie Green uh, introduced this wonderful video showing excerpts from Lita's life, her career, and then introduced her. She stood up, straight back, chin up, smiling. She walked across that stage over to the chancellor. They put the hood on her, and people were clapping and smiling, and Lita was bowing and smiling and looking at the audience. And I sat there and I thought, oh, Lita, when that spotlight hits you, you know exactly what to do. She knew what her little finger was doing when she was out there performing. And she <clears throat> They were clapping vigorously. She turned, bowed her head in thanks, and walked back off the stage. I, I'll bet you that no one knew that she was ill, or very few would know. No, she was a trooper. She had this gracious smile. When we, she came back, <clears throat> the thought I want to leave with you is that she brought, and this is the opportunity each one of us have. Everyone's time is limited. Come on. Every minute, every hour is important in these lives. And she knew it. And she brought to that event the very same insatiable quest to live her life every day fully, not wasting a minute. She was never afraid to take chances. She loved adventure. And she cut a very wide swath through our state and country. And she did it through her life and her career. And she always did it with kindness, and compassion for all of us around her. Let me just say that Lita, we are truly grateful for your life. Thanks.
University of Nebraska, a member of the Nebraska Broadcasters Hall of Fame, and the Nebraska Press Women's Hall of Fame. She is a TV pioneer, and twice she placed in the top ten of a women's flag competition, piloting a single-engine plane across the United States. This honorary degree is an honor long overdue for a person who has exemplified great community service and leadership. Regent Claire will hood Leah Paldrake with, with her doctoral hood. Leah's son, Aaron Drake, is escorted her to the stage. Please direct your attention to the Husker Vision screen for a video introduction to this amazing human being. From K11 Lincoln, KGIN Grand Island, this is the morning show with Leah Valdrick. Morning is from, good morning, good morning. Welcome to the morning show. It's Friday already. It's February the 22nd. For years, Nebraskans started their day with Leah Powell Drake, but her day never ended when the show wrapped. Drake was a TV personality and producer, a community leader and manager, a licensed pilot and a mother. And for hundreds of children, she was Calamity Kate on Cartoon Corral. Drake earned her Master's in Theater Arts from the University of Nebraska. She served as program director of KLON TV for 28 years. As host of The Morning Show, Drake interviewed presidents, humanitarians, and celebrities. Yes, thank you, Dora. Do you have a story on the line? Can you sing it last night? I've been listening to you all day long. One of the finest actors I have ever seen. It's a delightful little film. I love this little story. You know, you were in the morning to work, watching it every morning, 15. Oh, yeah, he's back. I'm going to go on. Drake went on to serve as Assistant Network Program Manager for Nebraska's statewide public television and radio network, now known as Nebraska Public Media. Drake is a tireless champion for the University of Nebraska Lincoln, on stage and off. She performed at the Nebraska Repertory Theater and served on the boards of the University of Nebraska College of Fine and Performing Arts and the Nebraska Alumni Association. She played a leading role for the OSHA Lifelong Learning Institute at UNL. The city of Lincoln benefits from Drake's energy and generosity. She helped create the Lincoln Star City Holiday Parade and served on numerous boards. Last year, Drake added another line to her resume. She became an internet sensation when her celebrity interview videos went viral, proving that Lita Powell Drake never goes out of style. Mm -hmm. Extraordinary achievements in the fields of broadcasting and the theater in honor of her leadership and creative vision in television programming for all ages, in respect of her tireless work as an advocate for the community, and in gratitude for her loyalty and lifetime of service to the state of Nebraska and her alma mater, the University of Nebraska Lincoln confers upon Leah Powell Gray the honorary degree. Doctor of Humane Letters. Just a Broadway baby Walking off my tired feet 
pounding 42nd Street to be in a show. Broadway baby, learning how to sing and dance, waiting for that one big chance to be in a show. to be on some marquee all twinkle and lights a spark to pierce the dark from battery park up to washington heights someday maybe all my dreams will be repaid heck i'd even play the maid to be in a show Mr. Producer, I'm talking to you, sir. I don't need a lot, only what I got, plus a Diet Coke and a follow spot. I'm just a Broadway baby, slaving at the five and ten, dreaming of that great day when I'll be in a show. Broadway baby Making rounds all afternoon Eating at a greasy spoon To save on my dough At my tiny flat There's just my cat A bed and a chair Still I'll stick it till I'm on a bill all over Times Square. Someday, maybe, if I stick it long enough, I can get to strut my stuff. Working for a nice man like a Zigfield or a Wiseman in a great big Hello, good afternoon. I am Julie Hagemeyer, the former general manager of the Nebraska Repertory Theater and the Johnny Carson School of Theater and Film. Lita meant so much to me, both personally, I was one of those kids on Calamity Kate, <laughs> and also very much professionally. She helped guide my career along, really, as she was making this great contribution to both the Carson School and to the Nebraska Rep. So it is my honor to represent the Nebraska Repertory Theater and the faculty, staff, and students, past, present, and future of the Johnny Carson School of Theater and Film. Uh, Lita, of course, had a lot of passion for a lot of different things. But what I'd like to do is marry her passion for television with her passion for theater. And being retired now from my position as general manager, I have way too much time to watch TV. And I'm becoming addicted to game shows. I don't know why, but I am. And uh, I thought I'd use one of them that I've become addicted to, America Says. Have you heard of that one? Yeah, if you're not familiar with America Says, it is a game show on the Game Show Network um, that asks its contestants to come up with seven different words to fill in a blank. They ask a question, they've asked the same question to America, and um, then America's top seven answers are what the contestants are supposed to come up with. But they give them the first letter of each word of those potential seven questions. So, play along with me. Um, L-O-L, -L, and it's not laugh out loud. L, N, R, A, B, N, R, T, P, O, L, L, I. That one's pretty obvious. 
AB and LPDA. And one of the questions that's often used in America says is, when I think of, and then it's like a person, place, or thing, I think of blank, and we're going to fill in that blank. So when I think of Lita, I think of. And we'll start with the LOL. And I bet most of you got that one already. I would often get phone calls in my office in the temple building, and it, she would be on the line with that distinctive voice, and she would say, Miss Julie, I was never Julie, I was always Miss Julie. Miss Julie, this is Lita of Lincoln, like it could be anybody else. <laughs> and she would always come up with some idea that we should do with the Nebraska Rep to promote our programming. She'd have a project for me to help her with. There were a variety of different reasons, or maybe she'd just, you know, call and have a chat. That was lovely too. But it was always Lita of Lincoln, as I'm sure you all well know. Anybody get the L? Well, to me, that L is loyalty. We are so fortunate at UNL, and especially at the Carson School and the Rep, to have such loyal, loyal patrons, such loyal alumni. We have a lot of great support. But you know, I can't think of anybody really with more loyalty to that place than Lita Paldrake. She was fantastic. For over 50 years from the time she came to work on her master's degree until really when COVID stopped the rep from performing, she was right there. She um, attended every show that I can think of that we did. Um, she was a great support in whatever project we were doing to promote. She, in fact, herself helped promote our shows on Live and Learn which was her public TV access um, show that she did for um, especially seniors, but really everybody could enjoy the interviews that she did. And of course, Purple Mask. No one's mentioned that yet today. She was a very proud member of Purple Mask Theater Honorary. And whenever I would call a meeting to um, have these Purple Mask members come together, Lita would always, always be there. Now, I don't know, this one I kind of made up, so you may have problems with NRAB, but that is the Nebraska Rep Advisory Board. Lita was around in 1968 when the Nebraska Repertory Theater started, and she came with the strong encouragement of Dr. William Morgan, and he was her mentor, she absolutely loved Dr. Morgan. She would talk about him all the time. And when he passed away in 1999, she got all of us together, especially, <clears throat> sorry, especially former students of Dr. Morgan's. And we had this wonderful memorial service, much like today, where we're telling stories and we're thinking good thoughts about the person that we so looked up to. And now, Lita, you are in that same position. You are that person we are looking up to. NRTP, Nebraska Repertory Theater Performances. Ron talked about her memorable performances, and in a minute, we're going to see some reenactments of those performances uh, by our current students and an alum of our program. Um, but I also remember her more recent Nebraska Rep performances through Death Trap, anybody see that one, hopefully? Or also through Moonlight and Magnolias, where she played the crazed secretary. That was a role meant for Lita, it really was. She was fabulous and so funny. We could use LOL as laugh out loud because she often did make us laugh out loud, absolutely. AB, oops, I skipped one, sorry, Ollie, Obviously, you all know what that is. That's the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. Uh, without Lita's encouragement, I don't think we'd have the strong partnership that we have today with Ollie. Lita helped us to put classes together. So before every Nebraska Rep show, there was an opportunity to go backstage at the Rep. She uh, arranged tours of the backstage, but we also just sat and chatted about how we put the show together or why we selected that particular show. 
Lita told me I was not allowed to retire because then she, what would she do to, to put that class together? Well, COVID stopped the class for a little bit anyway. Um, and now we've both handed it off to somebody else. We also, you know, put together some special events with Ollie and we had a discounted ticket price with Ollie, all because Lita encouraged that. And she also encouraged the Emeriti faculty to take part in Ollie events when it came to the rep because she was so passionate about getting the rep out there. Okay, now to the AB, which is the alumni board. That's been mentioned. She was a member of the Hicks and Lee College of Fine and Performing Arts alumni board and got me involved in that. One of the things she's always done is to make sure that the theater alumni had a place at the table. They were always being awarded because of Lita's diligent nominations especially those people from the 60s and 70s when Lita was most active as a student. Um, certainly, she also helped and encouraged those folks who came after her. That's exactly what Lita did, was forever encouraging and mentoring. Um, she was also part of the National Alumni Board. And as, a, as the person who replaced her on that national board, I know that it's tough to kind of get the arts recognized it's a very sports related board, which is fine, but she and I worked diligently together to make sure that the arts, particularly theater, were heard at that national level. Um, LPDA, this is probably the most important of all of these seven words that we are uh, putting together today and that is the Lita Powell Drake Award. In 1968, she established this award, and I want to read the exact words, to encourage superior performance in dramatic arts by University of Nebraska students. For over 50 years, she contributed to the recognition of these young people who were getting their professional career started at the Johnny Carson School of Theater and Film. Lita herself won Best Actress Award five times in a row. And so then the award was named Lita Powell Drake Award for Excellence in Acting. And she not only provided her name to the award, she gave them a stipend. So each student got some much needed money at the end of an academic, at the end of an academic year. Looking at that, there are 54 years of that award times two people who won every year. That's 108 recipients. And at the minimum, the stipend was $100. So that's over $10,000 that Lita gave directly to our students to help them with their careers. I'm going to add three more words before I introduce our talent. And I know that they don't do that on America Says, but I'm, I'm doing it anyway. And that's another L, a G, and another L. With much love and gratitude, we at the Johnny Carson School of Theater and Film celebrate the legacy of Lita Powell Drake, and we thank her so much. Now, again, it is a great honor for me to help showcase some of the great work that Lita was encouraging through her scholarship award. I would like to introduce Mia Hilt, who will play Blanche, one of Lita's most renowned uh, roles, and Shay Jowers, who will play Stella in a scene from A Streetcar Named Desire. Following them immediately will be alumna Judy Hart, who will play, and again, another one of Lita's great roles, Martha, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf.
don't you look at me, Stella. No, 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 not till I've bathed and rested. <laughs> and then turn that over light off. Turn that off. I won't be looked at in this merciless way. about it and, and say what a convenient location and such. <laughs> well, precious lamb, you haven't said a word to me. Oh, you haven't given me a chance to, honey. Well, now you talk. You open your pretty mouth and talk while I look around for some liquor. <laughs> I know you must have some liquor on the plate. Now, where could it be? Oh, I spy, I spy. Oh, no, no, Blanche, you sit down and let me pour the drink. Oh. Now, I don't know what we've got to mix with. Maybe a Coke's in the icebox. Oh, no Coke, honey, not with my nerves tonight. <laughs> now, where, where, where is? Oh, Stanley, oh. Uh, Bowling, you love the, they're having, a, oh, I remembered I had some soda. They're having a tournament. Oh, just water, honey. Chase it. And now don't you worry, your sister hasn't turned into a drunkard. She's just all shaken up and <laughs> tired and dirty. <laughs> now, now you sit down now and explain this place to me. What are you doing in a place like this? Now, Blanche. Oh, I'm not going to be hypocritical about it. I'm going to be honestly critical about it. <laughs> never, never, never in my worst dreams could I picture. Why, only Poe, only Mr. Edgar Allan Poe could do it justice. Out there, I suppose, is the school-haunted, woodland of wire. <laughs> no, honey, those are the Ellen and Trash. Oh, well now, putting joking aside, seriously. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you write me, honey? Why didn't you let me know? Tell you what, Blanche? Oh, I bet you had to live in these conditions. Well, aren't you being a little intense about it? It's really not all that bad. Oh, Nolan's ain't like other cities. Oh, this has got nothing to do with Nolan's. You might as well say, well, forgive me. Blessed baby, the subject is closed. Thanks. Well, you're all I've got in the world, and you're not glad to see me. Oh, now, Blanche, that isn't true. No? Well, I've forgotten how quiet you were. You never did give me a chance to say much. <laughs> so I just got in the habit of being quiet around you. A good habit to get into. <laughs> <laughs> well, you haven't asked me how I happened to get away from the school before the term ended. Well, I thought you'd volunteer that information if you wanted to tell me. You thought I'd been fired? No, I thought you might have resigned. I was so exhausted by all I've been through. My nerves broke. I was on the verge of lunacy almost. So Mr. Graves, Mr. Graves is the superintendent. He suggested I take a leave of absence. <laughs> Couldn't put all those details into the wire. <laughs> Ooh, this buzzes right through me and feels so good. Oh, well, won't you have another? No, one's my limit. You sure? Oh, you haven't said a word about my appearance. You look just fine, Blanche. God love you for a liar. <laughs> oh, daylight never exposed so total a ruin. What about you? Why, you put on some weight. Well, why, yes, you're just as plump as a little partridge. Oh, and it's so becoming to How you. How Oh, come on. I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. Just gotta wash down the hips a little. Stand up! Oh, not now. Are uh, you hearing me? I said stand up. Oh, now you nasty child, you spilled something. 
Uh, you ought to have a cut and like a bob with your dainty features. Uh, you do have a maid, don't you, Sally? Oh, no, with only the two rooms, it's... <laughs> Two rooms, did you say? Yes, this one and the other. <laughs> I am going to have just one tiny bit more, sort of to put the stopper on, so to speak. And then I am going to put the bottle away. So I won't be tempted. <laughs> I want you to look at my figure. Did you know I haven't put on one ounce in ten years? I weigh the same that I weigh for some of you left Davies. For some of them. Dad died and you left us. It's just incredible, Blanche. How well you're looking. Well, but Stella, with only the two rooms, I don't see where you're going to put me. Oh, well, we're going to put you right here. Oh, well, what kind of bed is this? One of them uh, collapsible things. Does it feel all right? Wonderful, honey. I don't like a bed that gives much. Uh, but, uh, but there's no door between the two rooms, Stella. Stanley. Will it be decent? Well, Stanley is Polish, you know. Oh, yes. Yes, there's something like Irish, aren't they? Uh, only not so highbrow. <laughs> well, <laughs> I brought some nice clothes to meet all your lovely friends in. Oh, I'm afraid you won't think they're lovely. Well, what are they like? They're Stanley's friends. Pollocks. They a mixed lot. Heterogeneous type. Yes, tops is right. Well, I brought some nice clothes and I will wear them. <laughs> well, I suppose you're hoping I'll say I'll put up at a hotel, but I'm not going to put up at a hotel. I want to be near you. I've got to be with somebody. Can't be alone. Because as you may have noticed, I'm not very well. You do seem a bit nervous or overwrought or something. But will Stanley like me? Or will I just be a visiting in law? So that I couldn't stand that. You'll get along fine together. As long as you try not to compare him with the boys we went out with back home. Is he so different? <laughs> yes, a different species. Well, in what way? What's he like? Oh, you can't describe someone you're in love with. Oh, but here's a picture of him. What an officer. A master sergeant in the engineer corps. Oh, those are decorations. Oh, he had those on when you met him. Oh, I assure you, I wasn't just blinded by old brass. Of course, there were things to adjust myself to later on. Such as his civilian background. Well, how'd he take it when you said I was coming? Oh, well, Stanley doesn't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't told him. He's on the road a good deal. Oh, travel? Yes. Good. Well, isn't it? I can hardly stand it when he's away for a night. Why, Stella! And when he's gone for a week, I nearly go wild. Oh, gracious! <laughs> and when he comes back, I cry on his lap like a baby. Well, I guess that is what is meant by being in the Stella, I haven't asked you the thing you probably thought I was going to ask. And so I expect you to be understanding about what I have to tell you. What, Blanche? Stella, you're going to approach me, but before you do, take
take into consideration you left. I stayed and struggled. You came down to New Orleans to look after yourself, and, and I stayed at Belle Reeve and tried to hold it together. Honey, I'm not meaning this in any reproachful way. But all the burden descended onto my shoulders. The best I could try and do was make my own living, Blanche. I know, I know. But you are the one that abandoned Belle Reeve, not I. I stayed and fought for it, bled for it, I nearly died for it. Okay, stop this hysterical outburst and tell me what's happened. What do you mean, fought and bled? What kind? I knew you would, Stella. I knew you would take this kind of attitude about it. About what? The loss! The loss. Bell Reeve? Lost, is it? Yes, Stella. But how did it go? What happened? Oh, you're a fine one to ask me how it went. Blanche. You're a fine one to sit there accusing me of this. Blanche. I, I, I took the blows in my face and in my body. Oh, those deaths, the, the long parade to the graveyard. Father, mother, Margaret, that dreadful way, so big with it. Couldn't even be put to a coffin, but had to be burned like rubbish. You just came home from the funerals, Stella. The funerals are pretty compared to deaths. Funerals are quiet, but deaths, not always. Sometimes the breathing is hoarse. Sometimes it rattles. And sometimes they cry out to you, don't let me go. Even the old, sometimes they say, don't let me go, as if you could stop them. The funerals are quiet with pretty flowers. And oh, what gorgeous boxes they pack them away in. Unless you were there at the bed when they cried out, hold me. You'd never suspect there was a struggle for breath and bleeding. You didn't dream, but I saw, saw, saw. And now you sit there telling me with your eyes that I let the place go? How in hell do you think all that sickness and dying was paid for, Stella? Death is exciting. Fancy! And old cousin Jessie's right after Miss Margaret's while hers. The grim reaper had set up his tent at our doorstep. The reed was his headquarters. Honey, that's how it slipped through my fingers. Which one of them left us a fortune? Which one of them a cent of insurance even? Only poor cousin Jessie, a hundred dollars for her coffin. That was all, Stella. And with my pitiful salary at the school, yes, accuse me. Stand there and stare at me, thinking I'll let the place go. Well, where were you? In bed with your poem. Now stay right there. That is enough, Blanche. Oh, Stella, where are you going? I'm going to the bathroom to wash my face. Stella, you're crying. Does that surprise you? you forgive me. I didn't mean
Hopefully you can see me over the podium. Um, you're going to have to help. I'm Judy Hart. Uh, I, was a, I actually met Lita in the early 70s when I came back, when I was in school at the university. Um, you're going to have to help me with this. Um, you're going to have to imagine Lita saying these words. Where is that? It's this. <gasps> oh, great. Sorry. i, I got to put this in. Okay. Hi, folks. Sorry about that. Um, it's a live performance. Yes, it is, and a memorial. How, okay, there we are. Um, so, oh my gosh, I have to be careful about this then. Um, so I want you to close your eyes. I want you to imagine a long, tall Lita Powell uh, saying these words. She's probably, what, how was, must be 20 years old, uh, ready to take on the world, and she's taking a big chomp out of it by uh, doing this role, which uh, is Martha from Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Um, and um, I don't have the growl, so you've got you've to gotta help me uh, with your imagination. So this is a short monologue in the play. Uh, Martha and George have been, they have friends over. Uh, they've been drinking all night, and uh, George got mad and left the house, which leaves Martha with a would-be suitor. So here we go. You're all flops. I am the Earth Mother, and you're all flops. Whew, I disgust me. I pass my life in crummy, totally pointless infidelities. Well, would be infidelities. <laughs> Ooh, that's a laugh. A bunch of boozed up, impotent lunkheads. Martha makes goo goo eyes, and the lunkheads grin, and they roll their beautiful, beautiful eyes back, and they grin some more, and Martha licks her chops, and the lunkheads slap over to the bar to pick up a little courage, and they pick up a little courage, and they bounce back over to old Martha, who does a little dance for them, which heats them all up mentally. So they slap over to the bar again, they pick up a little more courage, and their wives and sweethearts stick their noses up in the air, right through the ceiling sometimes, which sends the lunkheads back to the soda fountain again, where they fuel up some more, while Martha sits there with her dress up over her head, suffocating. You don't know how stuffy it is with your dress up over your head, suffocating, waiting for the lunkheads. So, finally they get their courage up, but that's all, baby. <laughs> oh my. There's sometimes uh, very nice potential, but oh my. My, my, my. Mm. But that's how it is in civilized society. All the gorgeous lunkheads, poor babies. <laughs> well, there's only one man in my life who has ever uh, made me happy. Do you know that? One. Well, I meant George, of course. Uh, George, George, my husband. George, who's out somewhere in the dark. George, who is good to me when, and whom I revile who understands me and whom I push off, who can make me laugh and I choke it back in my throat, who can hold me at night so that it's warm, and whom I will bite so there's blood, who keeps learning the games we play as quickly as I can change the rules, who can make me happy, and I do not wish to be happy. And yes, I do wish to be happy. God, George and Martha, sad, sad, sad. You know, someday, ha, what, some night, some stupid li liquor-ridden night, I will go too far, and I'll either break the man's back or I'll push him off for good, which is exactly what I deserve. Thanks, Lita. Lita is a legend. I mean, she knew that for a really long time, but we made it official here at the Playhouse by selecting Lita as one of our Playhouse legends in 2017. It's our version of a Hall of Fame. Over 56 years, 22 acting roles and 12 crew roles, Lita certainly left her mark on the Playhouse. 
Her first performance was in the Marriage Go Round in 1964, and she was rehearsing the Pirates of Penzance Senior in 2020 when that show was canceled because of COVID. One of her favorite performances here was as Jean Brody in the prime of Miss Jean Brody in 1985. In a Journal Star interview from that time, from that show, she said acting was a lot different than television. The thing is with television, you're just imparting information. You're transferring information and it's not emotional. But the theater is so wonderful because you can display all those terrific emotions, all the ups and downs. You can encompass so much more. You can't cry often on television. They get real nervous when you do that. But oh, you can just open up and let the faucets drain on the stage. In the newspaper's review of the prime of Miss Jean Brody, the critic noted, Drake's Brody is amazingly strong-willed. Sounds like typecasting to me. Although Lita was loved and respected for her work on stage, her legacy to the Playhouse will be our radioactive players. In 2011, Lita came uh, to meet me at the Playhouse to see if the Playhouse would be open to hosting some Ollie classes. After a little discussion, she left with a Playhouse Senior Theater troupe. I also found her to be amazingly strong-willed. <laughs> Lita was actively involved in our radioactive players as a liaison with Ali and as a performer. In fact, the majority of the singers you're about to hear in a few minutes uh, from our radioactive players were recruited or heard about it from Lita. We have performed 11 shows and counting. By turning junior shows into senior shows, we've also started a revolution with a nationwide program for senior citizens that's being implemented by Music Theater International, one of the big licensing houses. This will bring Broadway musicals to senior performers across the country and perhaps the world. So Lita's musical theater legacy certainly will extend far beyond these buildings' walls. Uh, two personal stories. When we were rehearsing the Pirates of Penzance Senior, the music director, our wonderful piano player today, Jack Forbes Wilson, gave Lita a little bit in a song that when he was working on it. So he said, this is, I gave Lita a little bit. So she's a pirate in the opening number, and at one point he had her crossing the stage, carrying a keg, and drunkenly laughing. And I went, uh-oh. <laughs> so the first time I watched this in rehearsal, this cross from there to here from Lita took five minutes. <laughs> so Sierra, when you told that story about Godspell and the goats and sheep today, I want you to know your GM practiced what she preached about stealing the show. And Lita was always promoting the Playhouse, and, and she did this city television interview program for years and years, and I was on it frequently talking about Playhouse shows, and in fact, I believe I was in the last group of interviews that she did for that program. We did an interview in August, just two months ago, August, where we were going to promote the Playhouse season. Now, she had just gotten that degree, and so before we went on the air, she said, you know, Maury, I just got this degree from the university, so now you have to call me doctor. And I said, Lita, why would you want me to call you doctor when you know I always call you God? And she let out one of those great Lita Powell Drake barking brain laughs. And I'm going to treasure that for the rest of my life that I got Lita to laugh in August. On behalf of the Playhouse Board of Directors, the staff, and our whole theater family, it's been an honor to host this celebration of life. And I am personally honored to be here today to acknowledge the wonderful stage life of Lita Powell Drake. I'm so glad we had this time together Just to have a laugh or sing a song Seems we just get started And before you know it It's time to say so long Lita of Lincoln On stage and off camera Was a force of nature Full of exciting ideas and causes and passion for, for life. I never 
shared the stage with Lita. I never, God knows, was on Calamity Kate, but I did share with her a decades-long friendship and close personal relationship beginning in 1964. In fact, uh, when I left Nebraska in 1966, Lita was the only one other than members of my family that I stayed connected with. I always had Lita time when I came to Lincoln, and that meant going to wonderful live theater, movies, museums, wonderful lunches and dinners, uh, gossiping about people that we knew and what was going on in our lives and careers. And it wasn't just here, by the way, in Lincoln that we stayed connected. When uh, Lita was at National uh, Nebraska Public Television, she used to come back to Washington, D.C., my adopted uh, hometown, once a year. And despite a, a busy, hectic schedule, she always carved out time for us to be together so I could show her around Washington and introduce her to all the, the vibrant arts and culture of our nation's capital in my adopted hometown. Next to sports, and God knows she was competitive, uh, Lita's greatest passion probably was travel, I would say. She loved to travel, traveled all over the world, and for her it wasn't about all oh, the sights that she had seen, the, uh, the food, it was about the people she met, the people she interacted with. And when she talked about a country, she sort of ranked them in terms of what her uh, people experiences had been. Well, I had one travel experience with Lita, and it was, certainly was a memorable one, not for all the right reasons. In September three years ago, my husband and I took a, uh, a uh, villa in Sicily for the month of September, and we invited family and friends to come along and stay a week with us. Well, I, of course, immediately thought of Lita, invited her. She jumped at the chance for another, um, another chance to have a wonderful travel adventure and convinced her good friend Sandy Van Pelt to come along. Well, the day they left Lincoln, the weather forecast was so bad that they actually, after Memorial Stadium had filled up, they emptied the stadium and canceled the football game. Perhaps that was the first bad omen of the Scott Frost era. In any event, uh, of course, what happened? Uh, flights were delayed, uh, connections were missed. 13 or 14 hours later, they arrived in Sicily, of course, without their luggage. And their luggage did not appear for another three days. But hey, these are troopers. They are show people. They improvise. For Lita, for the first night cocktails, it was to take a pair of my underwear and one of my large, my large um, uh, t-shirts, and that was perfect attire, don't you think, for a cocktail night in Sicily. Well, we were very close, you know. So in any event, uh, as you can see in these slides that follow, the uh, luggage did finally arrive, and we had a wonderful week of of uh, seeing uh, sights and wonderful food, made especially um, memorable because of our Italian cousin Ezio and his sister-in-law and niece who came along, and they did all of the cooking. And we had these wonderful, memorable um, meals and long conversations. It, it was just a wonderful experience. And in fact, uh, Lita and Sandy were so grateful to Ezio, they created a little skit uh, to honor him. Uh, complete with the laurels, the Roman laurels, for, have, ha, for what he had done to help make it such a memorable, uh, memorable time for all of us. Um, I had planned uh, to go out to Lincoln in August for 10 days, and Lita and I had already started talking about some things we were going to do. She was bound and determined, she was a GM with me too, that I was going to go to that tractor museum out of the Ag co College campus. Now, I said, okay, fine, I'll go as long as I can have some of the ice cream that they uh, fix out there at the Ag Culture uh, Campus. But uh, we were, particularly during the pandemic uh, year, Lee and I would talk on the phone, oh, guys, three or four times. And uh, it was so, it was in June we were talking, and she told me that she had had the prognosis and she only had six months to live. So I immediately, when I hung up the phone, canceled August and made new plans. Two days later, I arrived in Lincoln for what turned out to be uh, my last visit with uh, Lita. It was five memorable days. We did all of the things uh, we always did. Um, and our last night, we had a wonderful dinner at Dish, which happens to be my favorite restaurant here in Lincoln. And afterwards, um, I walked with her back to her car, that Cadillac, 
parked on O Street near Golds of Nebraska, that store she so venerated and, and, and loved that experience she had being a spokesperson for, for Golds of Nebraska. And then we shared a hug and a kiss and I sang those lyrics that uh, uh, I opened our, uh, uh, my, my uh, section of the program with. And then we had a big laugh, that, that laugh that uh, Maury spoke of is so memorable. And of course, because I'm such a terrible singer. And anyway, um, that was the last time that, uh, that I, I saw Lita. You know, um, when I think about Lita I, and her legacy, what I really, uh, really resonates with me is how much she gave back to her adopted hometown, how much she loved it, and, and, and she gave, you know, resources, her boundless uh, energy um, to various institutions he so loved, and none was more that case in this wonderful venue that we're in today, the Lincoln Community Playhouse. And for Lita, she told me, I know what, Community was important. It should be, it should be a, a playhouse that represents all of the, all the community. And certainly, uh, Maury has, uh, has uh, in fact, uh, uh, referenced the fact that it was through that, that commitment to theater being for the entire community that she came up with the idea for the radioactive uh, players. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please welcome to the stage the radioactive players. Somebody who would not step, sit down. She was in your face. I mean, who else would have the gay men's chorus of San Francisco come and be on the morning show in the 1980s in the middle of the AIDS epidemic? Who but Lita would uh, have uh, use that wonderful voice of hers to do phone banking to urge Nebraskans to abolish the death penalty? And finally, who would uh, ask those off-the-wall questions in those wonderful interviews that she did over the years. Well, of course, who would that be? That would be Lita Powell Drake, Lita of Lincoln. Ladies and gentlemen, the radioactive players. This is what I experienced in a dream. Tell us. Tell us in your own words. I dreamed last night I got on the boat to heaven, and by some chance I had brought my dice along, and there I stood. And I hollered, someone save me. But the passengers, they knew right from wrong. For the people all said, sit down. Sit down, you rock the boat. The people all said, sit down. Sit down, you rock the boat. And the death oil dragged you under by the sharp lapel of your checker. found a bottle in my fist, and there I stood, nicely passing out the whiskey, but the passengers were bound to resist, for the people said beware, you're on a heavenly trip, people all said beware.
Well, thank you all for coming. I really can't think of a better way to pay tribute to a wonderful woman, my mother, your friends. Lita, how'd we do? She had to have the last laugh. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you so much.